Hey mathematics learners, welcome to Distance Learning with Lee, where I make learning mathematics super easy. So on today's video tutorial guys, we're going to be tackling question 4.3. Question 4.3 falls under the umbrella of data handling. In particular, we're going to be analyzing, right, this pie chart analysis. We're going to be analyzing these two pie charts. Okay, we also have some probability questions um that basically comes through then question 4.3.3 all right so please make sure that you guys are super engaged right you have your distance learning with lead book with you taking down notes all right so before you get started with today's video tutorial guys please make sure that you are subscribed to the channel please make sure that you click on that notification bell so that you get notified every single time I upload a video tutorial guys and also please don't forget to give these video tutorials a huge thumbs up because guys it really helps the channel grow it really does right and it helps the channel to reach more learners that want to better their mathematics marks also guys you can also support the channel by becoming a member of the channel the perks of being a member right the, the benefits of being a member of the channel is that you get to watch all these video tutorials the minutes i upload them okay so you don't have to wait for the day that i make them public okay at like 6 p.m or 7 p.m all right so guys please consider supporting the channel in that way okay support goes a long way guys it really does okay um it really does because making these video tutorials really takes a lot of effort it really takes a lot out of me okay so if you really just want to support and just show your appreciation for the content that i'm making for you guys there please guys support the channel even just press the thanks button it will really go a long way guys and it will really also show me that you guys really 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 do appreciate the content um that i'm making for you guys here all right so without any further ado guys let's get started with today's video tutorial mentioned in today's video tutorial guys we're going to be tackling question 4.3 and question 4.3 is a pie chart and it also has some probability questions okay so let's see it says gatla hall moved into a rented flat okay below are two pie charts showing a comparison of his monthly budget with his parents combined monthly budget okay so here we are told what is gatla hall's monthly budget when compared with or combined with his uh parents monthly budget okay the income is basically uh 29,300 and if it's just his monthly budget the income is 7,000 okay so let's look at what's going on here so we're given these pie charts as you already know when you're dealing with the pie charts right when you add up all these sections, right, these section percentages, right, it's equal to 100. It should be equal to 100, okay, right? Because it's been divided into sections that now when you add them all up, should be equal to 100, okay? So we see there's A, there's B, there's C, there's D, there's E, and there's F, and we are given the key for what all these A, B, C's right to f mean the a basically means that that is the money that's been set aside for food and electricity the b shows that that is the amount that's been set aside for insurance the c shows that is the amount that's been set aside for clothing and personal care the d shows that that is the amount that's been set aside for communication like cell phone and data okay the d um, the E is the amount that's been set aside for savings and the F is for other things, maybe like entertainment and stuff like that. All right. So that is basically what's going on with the key there. All right. And then just interest sakes, right? When we look at Katlaho's parents combined monthly budget or Katlaho's budget combined with his parents what are they mostly spending the most on okay we can see that oh actually they're spending the most on food and electricity what is this family spending the least on okay they're spending the least on clothing and personal care all right okay so that is that i think we're more than ready to have a look at the question it is saying study the pie charts above and answer the questions that follow question 4.3.1 says name one other type of graph that could be used to display the data above okay so what other type of graph do you guys can you guys actually think of 
that can be used to represent like categories comparisons of values okay because if you think about it this type of information can be put into one graph what graph immediately just pops out of your head right if you're a learner that's super focused super engaged in class it's a bar graph okay because you know that with your bar graph right your stack bar graph right we can use a stack bar graph to compare different categories of data because for example maybe one bar graph it'll be in blue and then the other one will be in red and that'll allow us to now compare when it comes to Katlao's, when it comes to Katlao's parents' combined monthly budget and Katlao's monthly budget, like who's spending the most on what, right? So a stacked bar graph allows us, it enables us, right, to compare different categories of data. So it has to be a stacked bar graph, okay? So it's a stacked bar graph or a multiple bar graph. Question 4.3.2 says, calculate the missing value D in katlao's monthly budget okay so we're going to be focusing on katlao's monthly budget okay so we're going to be focusing on this pie chart here on the right and we want to determine we see here we've got that missing value d there what is that percentage okay so remember when i started the video tutorial i said that when you add up all these percentages in your pie chart it is equal to a hundred so if you've got one missing value, then it becomes super easy to determine what that missing value is. Because if you add up all these values, they need to equal to 100, okay? So in this case, to calculate the missing value D, okay, this is just an easy peasy to marks, right? All that we need to do is that we basically need to take, okay? We know that the total percentages in a pie chart, okay? is equal to a hundred percent okay so in this case we know that now if you add a plus b plus c plus d plus e plus f you need to get to a hundred percent all right so what was the value for a right so a we're going to say 40 percent plus five percent plus 30 percent plus d plus five percent plus five percent is equal to a hundred okay and then from here right we're just going to add up the values on the left hand side so we're going to add up 40 percent plus five plus 30 percent plus five plus five and get what that gives us right so if you add up these values together you will get 85 percent plus d is equal to a hundred percent right and then from here guys we want to isolate this d we want the d to be on this and on its own so we want to minus the 85 percent on the left hand side if you minus it on the left hand side then you might minus it on the right hand side okay therefore your d is equal to 100 percent minus 85 percent is 15 percent okay so the value d is equal to 15 percent all right you're done let's have a look at question 4.3.3 it says determine as a decimal right so obviously you need to always focus on how they expect your final answer to be in this case they expect your final answer to be as a decimal the probability of randomly choosing an item in the parent's budget that is not savings okay so if you've watched my all my video tutorials right remember in the other video tutorial i explained how we go about applying the complementary rule um in this case right but i'll also show you guys how we can just do it without applying the complementary rule let's start with that part here okay so we want to determine the probability of randomly choosing an item in the parent's budget, okay? So in this case, we are going to be focusing on the parent's budget, okay? Choosing an item that is not savings, okay? So in other words here, right, when we calculate probability, guys, right, the first thing that you need to remember, probability is equal to, okay, so this is 4.3.3, right? Probability is equal to favorable outcomes which is the outcome that you want divided by total outcomes okay so what are the outcomes that we want in this case out we want to basically count the items that are not savings okay so this is the 
favorable outcome. So in this case, we want to count or include all the items that are not savings. Okay, so the savings is E. So we want to basically count everything else except for the savings. Okay, so it's going to be one, two, three, four, five. Okay, so the favorable outcomes is the 20% plus the 30%, plus the 15%, plus the 10%, plus the 10%. Those are the favorable outcomes, okay? Divided by the total outcomes, right? So how many total outcomes in total, right? These categories give us a total percentage of what? Gives us a total percentage of 100%, okay? So in this case, if you basically punch this into your calculator, 30 plus 15, okay? This will give you 85% divided by 100%. The percentages cancel each other out. Let me actually write it like this so that you guys see what's happening, okay? So the percentage and the percentage cancel each other, right? 85 divided by 100 is 0 0.85. They wanted the probability as a decimal, so it's just 0 0.85, okay? So that's just one way of looking at it, okay? The other way of looking at it, when you basically, uh, when you spoke about the complementary rule, right, I did mention that, okay, when we basically want to basically apply the complementary rule, right, we can think of the probability, I'm going to say the S stands for saving, the probability of saving plus the probability of not saving is equal to one, okay? So this is the concept that we wanna basically apply, okay? Because then from here, it makes us easy that we can just simply find out what is the probability of saving, right? And then from there, we can just minus it. We can basically take the value that we've calculated and we, and we take one minus that value that we've basically calculated, okay? So in this case, let's determine here, yeah, what is the probability of saving of items? Probability of items, probability of choosing an item that is saving. And then what is the probability of choosing an item that is not on the savings, okay? So we wanna basically focus on this part here, okay? So here, in this case, then, the probability of choosing an item that is on the savings, of randomly choosing an item that is on the savings, right? In this case, we'll just take that your probability then of choosing your item that is in savings, okay? Still favorable outcomes divided by total, okay? In this case, what are the favorable outcomes? The outcomes that you want, okay? The items that are on the savings, right? So in this case, it's just the E, Okay, so the E is 15. Total outcomes is 100. 15 divided by 100 is 15%, 100%, right? Okay, you will get 0 0.15. But remember, you want the probability of items that are not on the savings, okay? So that's why I said we can basically use the complementary rule, okay? That basically says that items that are not on the savings, we can basically manipulate this formula so that this ps prime right is isolated okay so basically i'm showing you guys how we get to our answer here okay so if we want to isolate the s ps with the inverted comma it's going to be one your ps prime is going to be one minus the ps because this is going to jump to the right hand side so it's going to be one to get your ps prime i'm just saying PS prime, because that denotes the not savings, okay, is going to be just equal to 1 minus PS, okay, so that's what we're doing, it's going to be 1 minus, right, what is the probability that items are in the savings, the 0 0.15, if you punch that into your calculator, you'll get 0 0.85, okay, so that's basically still a different way in which you can go about um, solving this equation. So that is your final answer. Okay, so you can either basically look at it like this, okay, where you just count all the items that are not savings, okay, or you can basically focus on the savings and then you still need to then take one minus the savings, okay, by using the complementary rule. All right, guys, so that is it for today's video tutorial. I hope you guys enjoyed this video tutorial. Please, guys, okay, I advise you to just take time 
get yourself a 288 page book right start with all the past papers that i've done um on the channel okay start them do them with me and listen listen to the approach listen to how i choose to approach a, a, a a question do that okay write it down try it on your own listen to um the solution focus right and then when it comes to now constantly doing these past papers it will be a breeze you'll see because now you'll know what you're supposed to do nothing will really be as hard as you think it is okay so please make sure that you do that okay give yourself time every day just do one video every day by the time that you guys write your exams you will be ready all right so that is it guys for today's video tutorial i'll see you guys on my next video tutorial on the next video tutorial we're going to be analyzing these bar graphs right so it's still under the topic of data handling right we are analyzing all of these things are what is needed it's under your scope right analyzing a pie chart analyzing a bar graph analyzing a line graph okay analyzing a box and box and whisker diagram everything that i'm doing literally on the scope okay and these past papers really help you guys um, tackle these concepts okay so i'll see you guys on my next upload that is it guys and i'll see you guys on my next upload distance learning with lee where i make learning mathematics super easy